Hey, it's Drinker and Mauler. Let's do Super Chess. Go! Right, oh, God. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, welcome back, everyone. It's uh, it's good to be here. As always, we're doing Super Chat Catch-Up because we never leave a Super Chat behind here on Open Bar. That's the way Ooh. of it. So. And as it turns out, we had quite a few that came in the other night, so it was yeah. lovely. Um, so I guess, yeah, let's let's turn our great brains towards these problems that people have set before us and see what we can do. What do you think? Sounds good. All right. Uh, let me see. Um, yeah, okay. The first one. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember this. So... Um, All oh, right, here we go. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it was funny. I thought that uh, I recognized one there, and then I skipped back a little bit further, and there was another I hadn't seen before. So, uh, yeah, back and then back again. Says, this one's from Mauler. Uh, finally finished your Doctor Strange 2 video. Utter masterpiece. Chef kiss. Everyone, uh, find someone who loves you like Mauler loves coming up with a million different versions of Benedict Cumberbatch's name. I think that was probably the last one we did. Well, I mean, thank you. <laughs> and yeah, it was, uh, it was fun to make. Uh, Eddie Brock says, Last of Us Episode 2 could have been great if they didn't kill Bill off. He could have taken the wrong dosage and lived on to meet Ellie, just like in the game. I mean, I think we we probably concluded Bill's not the kind of guy who would mess something like that up. You know, he's, he's pretty prepared. He's pretty, yeah. pretty solid when it comes to all that. I mean, he even opened the window so that the house wouldn't be stunk up. So the man plans ahead, I'll say that for him. Yeah, um, yeah, I was I was pretty happy with how it ended, and I think it would have been a real cheat for for them to like, you know, lovingly uh, go off to die together like that, and then you know, Bill wakes up like, oh god damn, you know, I'm still alive. Oh well. Um. Anyway. Uh, um. Yeah, Pi was that Pyro Ronpa says I'm not watching The Last of Us F Naughty Dog and while I at first thought it was alright after watching As and Jane's review Shad's review and remembering what actually happened in the game I don't like it well I mean not much we can say to that really if people don't like it they don't like it mm -hmm. can't make you like it but I guess from our perspective when we're trying to be fair with it we've kind of enjoyed it so far kind of appreciated I mean, the game to bolster the what they're going for I've used uh my familiarity with it to explore uh, what they did in the TV show. I don't consider it like some kind of insult. It's um, it is an adaptation through and through. Mm. If you understand the point the bill makes in the in the show, uh, the it's done in the reverse in the game. As in, you see him on his own, and you see what being uh, sort of <clears throat> aggressive and self-centered has done to his life. While in the show, he could have gone that way, but he opened up to Frank. And they had a wonderful life together. It's like same point being made, just two different sides of the coin. I was going to say, yeah, there's a there's one from Candle Jack here who pretty much encapsulates that. Says uplifting message. Fine, the cynical, isolated Bill is was a better thematic vehicle or influence, um, i.e., a warning for Joel and Ellie. Uh, that Bill makes more sense. I think, you know, as Moller was saying there, they're just two different sides of the same coin. You can either see him as a positive influence, like you know, I've learned that you need to have someone in life to, to protect, the, someone to make your life worth living rather than just surviving. Uh, or you can take the more grim and, and uh, sort of um, negative aspect of that from the game. Either way, they both teach Joel a lesson, I guess. It's yeah. just whatever you want to pull from it. Um, Phil Jordan says, Drinker, what is the most cringe? Velma, She-Hulk, Galadriel needing to talk to a counsellor after a man in an orc costume changes her, or the memory store? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, God, there's a pretty target-rich environment there. <laughs> um, Velma's without doubt the most hideous and um, you know, mean-spirited and awful yeah. of all of those. Uh, She-Hulk's quite close behind, I would say, but it's just more incompetent than, than awful. Um mm -hmm. Galadriel, it's just pathetic. <laughs> like, and uh, the memory store, it's just kind of laughably terrible writing, I guess. Yeah. So um, yeah, which is most cringe? Probably the, probably the the Galadriel thing. I think that's pretty cringe. Um, Rooster, Rooster Cogburn says Abby will be played by Amy Schumer. God help us. I would love to see that happen. I think uh, Amy would need to bulk up a bit though. I mean, bulk up with muscle, not 
you know, you get what I mean. Uh, <laughs> uh, David Orozco says, love the stream and think you gentlemen are doing a fantastic job. Just finished Dead Space remake and love the subtle changes and tweaks to the game. Drinker, will you be doing a live stream for Dead Space? Well, it's funny you should ask that. Um, yes, I've got it. It's all ready to go. I've been away this weekend, so I haven't had a chance to to like get into it yet. Um, so I think tonight could be the night. We'll see how it goes. Sweet. I'm looking forward to playing it one way or the other. Um, Stevie G says, Evening, gents. Mauler, I want to be convinced to purchase Dead Space. I don't think you've finished it yet. But as best you can, I would like you to use your long man powers to sell me on this game. Cheers. Well, you're in luck, because I have finished it, and I myself am now going to be playing New Game Plus, as well as um, possibly giving a go to Impossible Mode, I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> it was a pretty easy sell if you like horror and you like sci-fi. It's a game that relies on very uh, sort of consistent cause and effect, uh, balance resource management, and then survival. You shoot enemies to kill them. There are efficient ways to do it. There are efficient uses of the environment. It's very spooky and dark. You have to make use of light. You have to make use of oxygen. Like, there are loads of different ways that the game challenges you. And then, of course, there's a story running in the background. This is a, a ship in the distant parts of the uh, galaxy that uh, is a planet cracker. They they dig for resources, and it uncovered something, and the whole ship has gone silent. So it's, uh, nice. you'll go in there to try and see what happened, and it's a fucking wonderful world. Like, the Ishimura is the ship you go on. It's a one big ship. It's all connected, and you have to go, like, to medical or hydroponics or engineering or the bridge you have to go to all different places to repair different things meet different people learn different things um should satisfy everything you could want it's just a matter of if you're interested in the genre which i fucking love horror i love sci-fi so it's just it, and i love the original which if you do you're gonna love this i think i, I kind of love that idea of like the almost like the mary celeste in space concept yeah. you know an abandoned spaceship like what happened what happened to the crew what horrors went down there so yeah, should be good. Um, Blue Eyed Devil says, "I fear that Harry Styles will be cast as Soups or Bond." <laughs> God, don't even Maybe say it. Maybe both. How has he gotten into acting? Like legit, I'm I'm questioning my whole nature of my reality at this point. Like, why is he suddenly convinced himself he's an actor? Because wasn't he in that like "Don't Worry, Darling"? Yeah, I, I never saw that. Did you? No, I just know that he was in it, but I I think everyone kind of hated him. I mean, I right. could be wrong. Maybe he's amazing, but uh, you know, pop star turned actor is generally not great when it's been when it's been tried throughout history. Um, Imperius says, "I'm just going to sail the high seas for the Batman movie and ignore the rest. After firing Cavill, they should burn as a studio." Fair play, burn. Um, yeah, I don't think any of us were terrible impressed with James Gunn's no. new approach to DC. Um, it felt like almost he was just contractually obligated to get some kind of update out, and that's what he could cobble together. Yeah. Uh, what were those commando things called again? <laughs> um, creature something? Creature, creature commando? commandos, yeah. Are you excited for them? <laughs> Dude, through the roof excited. That's the number one I'm waiting for. <laughs> I'll grab it day one. It's funny. Someone will say when it's out, like, "Oh, Creature Commander's out," and I'll be like, "What? What is that? Like a CBBC thing where a bunch of like children's th like I don't know." And it's like, "No, it's the DC's <laughs> TV show that they're launching with." How could you not know? And it's like you know what? It's hard to between keep track that, of these days. Yeah, between that and Velma season two, I'm just beside myself <laughs> with anticipation. Oh yeah. Um. Mr. Nobody says, is Fat, Fat Geralt the dawn of the Last of Us universe? I think he might be, actually. You yeah. know, small amount of screen time, but damn, he makes an impact. you got to respect that guy. He especially makes an impact on Lev. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Street Dog says, watched episode one of Velma, and now I'm waiting in line to get voluntarily euthanized. Thanks, Mindy Kaling. <laughs> I don't blame you. Uh... Jose Contra Raz says, when are you going to Sky High? It's a great movie. Uh, I don't know. What? What's Sky High? Uh, that's the movie I think that did Gary mention it and you and Az hadn't seen it. Oh, yeah. So, um, well, that I movie mean, is just about like a superhero world where there's a superhero school. and uh, Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, things happen. We can add it to the list, I suppose. 
Um, John the Man Good says, To everyone, Isom gets popular and Ripperverse wants to do a cinematic version. Would he choose the drinker to do it? I hope not. <laughs> That'd be terrible. Uh, did you know that Bruce was the mind behind The Last of Us, not Neil? I know that, well, I know Neil Druckmann only co-wrote the, the first game, didn't he? Like Listen, he didn't I'm, have full... I'm not like trying, like we seem to do this with everything when we don't like a creator, like just how much of the, their input was a part of things that they were a part of that are good. It's like, I don't, I don't think anyone knows how much Neil's input was in the first game. Mm. It's like impossible to know. But his name I mean, is I just, uh, I, I kind of, um, yeah, I guess just, I just liken it to his influence on the Uncharted games. Where like the first three solid games, good stories. Uh, then he got heavily involved in the fourth one, and did he not like not fire the the woman who was essentially in charge of like the the scripts before it, but uh, kind of ushered her out the door? Um, and this is why you you ended up with uh, Uncharted Four, which kind of incorporates a lot of the elements that you see in Last of Us Two. I've heard um, something like that, yeah, and. The reality is, like, he may have had some good stories in him, and then he may have had a lot of cringe stories in him, you know? And mm -hmm. that could have just been what we ended up seeing. Um, it's not like every story you watch, you go like, wow, this writer's amazing in every single choice they made. Um, and with him, it's just, he made one of the fucking most insane and worst series of choices as part of one big project ever. Yeah. <coughs> See, I mean, I've... Uh, I've heard that he was quite heavily influenced by... Anita Sarkeesian um, and right. the work that she'd done and like because he's there's footage of him you know making speeches about um, you know upcoming game developments and stuff and I think talking to various like um, you know organizations basically saying yeah like I didn't realize the the internalized misogyny I had in my 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 work until uh, someone like Anita came along to educate me and I just thought gosh if that's the person you're taking your cues from when it comes to like uh, writing scripts for games it explains a lot, I suppose. Hmm. It's uh, yeah, it's a shame. Um, the Theristic Verses says, "Gents, check out the 2006 Spanish swashbuckler Al. What's that? Alatriste uh, features Vigo fresh off Lord of the Rings in gritty 17th century wars and intrigues. I have never even heard of that, and it's got Vigo Mortensen in it. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Wow." Um, Jedi Brooks says, Ellie can look at a bagel or a dead body and make the same expression. <laughs> her dialogue, her emoting, everything is just terrible. I mean, I hate to say it, but you're not entirely wrong so far. <laughs> like, unless there's hidden depths that this actress is going to give us. Um, I'm not loving call it her terrible, portrayal. But I, I don't think I call it good either. I, it's somewhere between those two for me. Um, uh, yeah, I, I mean, and yeah, I don't know how much of it is her her acting range and how much is just what she's been told to do, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll see that more, was obviously. A, yeah, I mean, the scene where she, um, you know, she goes into, like, the underground basement and um, finds, like, one of the infected there and just kind of casually kills it. Quite an unusual scene, and I'm not sure what they were trying to really tell us about her as a character. Oh, I've seen a couple of people say that. I thought it was... Uh, maybe I'm misreading it, but I thought it was obvious that... Um, she was confused. She was asking Joel about them and what they are and how they work. And that was the first time she got to see one up close. I think she cut it to see what it would do. And mm. since it basically didn't even notice, I confirmed to her that there's no human in there so she can kill it. I mean, you might be right. Yeah. I, 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 mean, I guess I just... I was trying to say was she was... Because I think they have to deal with that, right? Like, does she is she okay with just killing the zombies? You know, every character kind of has that moment. It's like, but they're people. Remember Herschel from A Walking Dead? That was funny as fuck, where he collected <laughs> zombies. He's like, they could be helped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> save them. I don't think they can, Herschel. You probably shouldn't keep them in the barn like that. <laughs> and so, yeah, I think that's what that moment was, was her learning that the, there's no humanity in there. Yeah, I mean, you could well be right. I mean, I guess I was just looking for a deeper meaning, but maybe that's all there is. Um, like I said, I could yeah. be wrong. That's what I thought it was. But I saw a couple of people being like, that was like sadism. And I was like, oh, I, I don't think that's what they're going for. I, I think it was, uh... yeah, you know what, if I didn't know who the character was, right, and um, I didn't know what her arc was from the games, and I took that scene and also paired it up with the scene where Joel beats the, the guard to death, and she's kind of watching like she's really into it, I'd be like, wow, it feels like they're setting up this character as some kind of sociopath, like she's eventually going to be on masked as a, right. a real sadist or something like that. I mean, I know 
that's presumably not what they're going to do. But yeah, it just feels very, just slightly off, I suppose, compared to the Ellie from the games. But... Yeah, because like I think I told you uh, when we were talking about episode one, her first reaction is really weird, and I still don't get why they chose that one. But her second reaction is that of I am shocked, but also this was something that I guess had to be done. Like that kind of reaction is much more in line for me. This the first one was like, I'm interested and curious about you beating this bad to death, which to me mm. is like that doesn't seem quite right. I don't know. Yeah. Uh Candlejack says, to supplement my last message, I can understand being different for adaptation reasons, cool, but really is it if it's not better then what's the point? I guess he's talking about the uh the Bill oh, and Frank also, storyline. Obviously I feel like it's different. I don't think it's better or worse. Yeah, I'd kind of yeah, I'd be um, in agreement with that, and it shows. Like, I, I guess this is my way of saying, like, um, I'm okay with them changing aspects of the the game, or you know, changing things for the adaptation, uh, provided those things are neutral or better than they were in the game. I mean, it, it's a simplistic statement, I suppose, but like, I just wanted to be clear about it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not like a purist where it's like no it has to stay exactly the same even if the changes you're suggesting would actually be an improvement like i i can see little things being changed you know um it's not a game ultimately it's a tv adaptation and there has to be certain allowances for that i suppose um yeah i guess the other question really is you know so much of the game's length is dependent on you just playing through it you know it's not necessarily all story it couldn't be it has to be action and stuff as well and it does make me wonder like is there like if you take all of the the just the player segments out where there's no particular story happening you're just getting through sections like i wonder how much actual storyline there is yeah when when you've pared all that down and it makes me wonder is that part of the reason why they're working in episodes like this where you're getting these big backstories for for characters like bill and frank is it just to eat up a bit of screen time? Because they don't necessarily have enough story in that first season to, to fill it all out. I mean, I've seen people say they're kind of excited to see what they'll do with Henry and Sam, what they'll do with, uh, obviously, the cannibal people, what they'll do with Tommy. And it's like, yeah, because obviously, I'm imagining the attitude is we're going to be beefing up everybody's characters and storylines because it's a TV show instead of a game. Hmm. I hope so. so. You know, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see how it goes. Um... Genmai Cha says, what are you guys' favorite alcohol cheese pairing? <laughs> well, uh, an older sheep's milk blue cheese with a sweeter port or ice wine is nice, but you can't eat a lot. Um, <laughs> okay, this is this is a question that deserves a response, I would say. Um, port and, and blue cheese. I don't like blue cheese, I've got to be honest. It, it smells like sick, and I've never gotten past that. Um, <laughs> but like, I, if I had to have port with something, it would be like mature cheddar. I think that would be all right for me. Um, but yeah, like, what was the question? Uh, so, um, yeah, it's got to be cheese. <laughs> okay, apparently. <laughs> what would you What would you pair up <laughs> with I your favorite alcohol? <laughs> um, I guess I don't, I've never thought about my preferences for this. So it's just a cheese that I like and I guess a drink that I like. I, don't yeah, know. I think so, yeah. But do they complement each other? Like, say, red wine and... and Cheese, you know, it's probably a good combination, I would say. I quite like that. It's not like something I make a point of having. You know, I don't sit down of an evening and be like, right, time to get the cheese and wine out or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I don't know if you have one. I really don't. I, there's just cheeses I like and alcohol I like. I don't know, I don't know that I've ever actually paired cheese with alcohol, to, like in a deliberate fashion. No, no, it's like I say, it's... I don't know. It feels like a thing that would be done after a fashionable dinner party or something. You know, yeah. bring out the port and cheese. Um, but yeah, for for me, it's usually like leftover kebab or something and stale beer. So yeah, I'm not quite ascended to that level yet. You very generously uh, offered that in exchange for the Star Wars IP, didn't you? I know, and I was. I think I was overselling it a little bit actually. Yeah. <laughs> I was being generous. Dude, I would love it if uh, if this happened. If Disney actually put Star Wars up for sale, they're like, it's so shit, and we're losing so much on it. I'm just, we're just getting rid of it. We're I've gone. heard they they are selling assets off now, right? I That's think they are. Yeah. Recently, it, you're right. It would be absolutely incredible if we found out they sold like Star Wars to Warner Brothers or something. It'd be like, or if they Whoa. sold it back to George Lucas for half the price. <laughs> 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 I, honestly, if I was him, I would consider doing it. I'd be like, I'll buy it back, and then I would just put a lock on anything ever getting developed again it's like no no one's getting it 
It's done. You don't get any more Star Wars. You've messed it up enough. All you would need to do is recanonize Legends and decanonize everything Disney did and just be like, Star Wars is done. That's the end. Yeah. I think that would be one of those decisions that's liked by most people as well. I think so, yeah. yeah. Uh, Lance Johnson says, uh, I know Robert Meyer Burnett would be kind even in an apocalypse. <laughs> I think he would, yeah. I think he'd be yeah. a nice guy. Um, Apollo95 says, Evening drinker, sad news regarding the passing of actress Annie Wershing. Uh, did the voice of Tess in Last of Us uh, and played Agent Walker in 24. R.I.P. That is sad indeed. Yeah. yeah. Um, she's pretty young as well, I would imagine. Um, I can't remember if she was late 40s or 50s, but um, I'm sad nonetheless. What uh, what happened to her? Oh, I don't know if it was like a cancer or something. I couldn't remember what I read. Hold on, I'll just see if I can bring it up here. Oh yeah, she was yeah. Um, I you know when they said Agent Walker, I was like, who is that? And it's yeah, Renee Walker. Um, yeah, I really like that character. She was really good. Yeah, she was diagnosed with cancer mid twenty twenty. Um, she she kept it private and continued to act. Yeah, died in January twenty ninth, age of forty five. Damn man, that is really sad. Fuck cancer. Uh, yeah. Well, R I P. Um, J P Fragoso says, "Cheers, drinker and open bar." Some friends and I are thinking of visiting Scotland in July. Any recommendations of must see, should see, can ignore, and should ignore? Uh, yeah, ignore all the people that you speak to in Scotland because <laughs> they're talking pish. Um, what to go and see? Just the obvious ones, I suppose. Like, go to Edinburgh, see the castle, see Holyrood Palace. Like, you know, go on a tour of all the pubs down the Royal Mile. Um, go to Glasgow, go around um, Socky Hall Street and stuff. Um, go up into the Highlands and see loads of hills and lochs and things. It's it's all pretty easy, man. It's, uh, there's not really, like any hidden, you know, dark tourist bits that I can recommend. It's all there. You're not directing people to the obelisk, the underground uh, facility organized by all of the great Scott elders. Shh, you're not supposed to talk about that. All right, how, did, how did a Welshman find about find out about this? I thought it was only known to people like me. I have connections. Damn it. Yeah, keep that. We'll edit this bit out later, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully I won't be too drunk to forget about that. Mm-hmm. Um, Joey Fouts says, Last of Us Episode 3 was the uh, graphic gay sex necessary, because I don't think it was. I don't think it was graphic. It was like I'm sorry, kissing. what? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Gra- you, when you say that is graphic gay sex, it makes you sound so, like, naive. <laughs> yeah. So get yourself on Pornhub, son. <laughs> you get an education. But I, I could have, I, I could have done with Nick Offerman and maybe being in slightly better shape. <laughs> he could have, could have hit the gym a little bit before that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that was just, it was <clears throat> just two guys kissing. That's ultimately all it was. As far um, as they went, yeah. I've seen people say like, sex scene took ages. And I was like, there really wasn't a sex scene. Yeah. Uh, it also says interesting character development was the Trojan horse to force the message down everyone's throats. Um, I again, I don't. It didn't feel like it was making any particular point about about gay rights or anything like that. I think you brought this up on Open Bar. It's not like they have a conversation about, you know, oh, God, we were so oppressed before the zombie apocalypse and it was probably <laughs> was the best free. thing that ever happened, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I can't I <clears> add, like, they just talk about enjoying food, music, and being with each other, like, doing gardening, like, in the piano. Like, I don't understand. Like, what's wrong with any of that? I'm sure this has been said before as well, but like the guy who played Frank, is it just me or was he like more like Joel than than the actor who's playing Joel? You know, if you just take his his general appearance, like oh, um, maybe. You, I, like, I thought he was like a dead ringer for him. It's like he's about the right age, you know. He's got the kind of grizzled beard and stuff, um, obviously in shape. And I was like, this guy looks more like Joel than Pedro Pascal does. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Um, let me see. Uh, Patrick Milner says, Hail Drinker, Mulder, and Cohorts. I'm listening to this while studying to be a bartender. Uh, this must be destiny. Also my first super chat, so cheers. Thank you, man. Cheers to you. Good luck becoming a bartender. Um, does it take a lot of studying? I thought, I thought it was, you know, you learn how to pull a pint and mix a few drinks and you're good to go. 
Well, the more exotic ones you know and the better you are at creating them, maybe that gets you higher scores. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you're going to be working in a cocktail bar, I suppose you need to do quite a bit of studying, but yeah, maybe yeah. that's it. Uh, Lilac and Snozberries says, More. I'm sure you've heard this a million times, but you should narrate ebooks. It would be a dictionary and I'd still listen to it. Um, I'm just so damn busy doing everything else, but maybe someday I'll do some Thanks. stuff. Intelligent Crayon Eater says, Gunn is spreading himself too thin doing the writing, directing, producing, etc. for everything. Normies won't get a DCU Justice League for 10 years. Um, yeah, I guess that's the problem, isn't it? Like, he can't, he can't be doing everything. He can't be personally involved in every movie in this list because it's, it's just way too much. And I assume he's not. Yeah. He must be handing it off to other people. Yeah, and part of that is where the talent needs to come in. You need to be good at figuring out who should be going where, you know? Yeah. Um... Ubu Roy says, Robert will probably appreciate this, but I just ordered the Kurosawa uh, Samurai Collection. Very nice. Um, Bobby says, James Gunn colors his hair white and wears thick frame glasses so people think he's smart. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that's his actual hair color now. He's old and people he's go probably, gray when they get old. Yeah, if you could put it this way, he's probably like 80% whitish gray and 10 like 20% still black or gray, harder gray, and he's just colored it all white to be consistent, I think. Hmm. Consistency is important, whether it be plot or hair. You know. Well, the thing for me is, I think most guys look just fine with the salt and pepper thing going on. I, no, I thank you, Muller. <laughs> it looks pretty cool. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, I think um, you know, below a certain age, it's probably just annoying. Like, if you're below forty, you probably don't want to be going grey. But like, beyond like forty-five, or you know, and especially when you get to about fifty, it's like yeah, you can go grey and look pretty cool. I would say. Yeah. Um, Alan Paxton says um, Moller just watched episode 3 of Last of Us and you were right on the money from what you said on the real BBC not sure why Az has such a hate boner for this show I mean honestly I'm just at the point where can everybody stop with the whole like you hate it you're a blah 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 to anybody on any side good god I love that we can just disagree if it's totally fine me and Az had like the most normal back and forth for a good like hour or so a lot mm -hmm. of people were just so fucking furious in chat, and it was just like we're just talking, man. Like we're just we're just saying like oh, I liked it because of this, oh, I didn't like it because of this. Like okay, fair enough. But I think maybe this was this, and this was this, and this. Was... That's what we're supposed to be advocating for. I really hate doing the whole like, why do you hate it? What's wrong with you? It's just like it's all right, it's fine, it's fine. I think yeah, I think there's so many youtubers out there who are basically just children inhabiting adult bodies and so the moment they disagree with someone it just devolves into some massive beef that goes on for months and it's like no th this is what happens when mature adults discuss things and disagree about stuff you know they each put forward their opinions the other person considers it and you know they might accept it or they might not and then you move on like that's that's how yeah, it's meant to work thing. yeah Full chill. Nobody needs to, because like I've seen the whole like <clears throat> that's it I'm unsubbing and it's like it's okay to disagree all right it's okay You'll be fine. You'll make it. I believe in you. Uh, speaking of as actually, Heels, Heel versus Babyface. That's a name that sounds familiar. He says, Joker, standalone movie, $50 million budget, $1.1 billion at the box office. That was, uh, yeah. That was a bit of a success story, wasn't it? Yeah, presumably that's trying to make the point of, like, just make a good movie, and then make another good movie, and then make another good movie. And look yeah. at that. Look at that. You're doing great. Stock trying to launch your extended universe overnight. <laughs> uh, Bobby Light says, Gunn doesn't like his actors to know the source material. Henry Cavill knows his source material, so Gunn doesn't want him, which sucks. I I don't know if that's the case. I don't think like, that's the reason. Yeah, I mean, the way he describes it is like they want to go for a younger Superman, and yeah, okay, it seems like bullshit, but um, I, I don't think... Yeah, I don't think Gunn would fire him or get rid of him just for that reason um i don't know i mean does he have a reputation now for being difficult to work with because of the witcher That's i'm pretty nice. sure like people on the inside must know what he's like on set i mean if if the difficulty to work with really has just been defined as him being like you know just take for example someone's like oh yeah now you say um i don't want to eat the blue mushroom and then he's like there are no blue mushrooms in this universe so please can we just say it's a mushroom and, and color it different and then they're like, no, we can't. Henry, do the scene. And then he's like, I'm not doing it until you change. Like, if that's the level of difficulty, I don't know. It's hard not to just respect him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just really hard not to. 
Um, uh, or if it goes as far as him being like, you fucking idiots don't even know what you're doing, but I'll do the scene. Or something like that. I could be like, okay, that's... Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit much. <clears throat> Uh, Intelligent Crayon Eater says, Superhero movies are in the same spot as Westerns and World War II movies in the 1960s. Creatively played out in 10 to 15 years from collapse and obscurity. Changed my mind. I can't because I agree with you. Um, they'll always, just like Westerns and war movies, they'll still be around, but yeah, they're not going to enjoy their current status for that much longer, at least in the wide, broad view of the world. Yep. Uh, Smell then sings, says James Gunn has one job, to put the Snyderverse into the ground. Beyond that, his only concern is securing paychecks for himself, his friends and his wife before Warner Brothers Discovery shows him the door. <laughs> it is interesting that his wife's project, like his wife's show is one of the few that uh, escaped cancellation, but hey, you know. To be honest, dude, that is pretty the... cringe, the whole wife situation. Like, I get that nepotism is very much something that just happens. Like, come on, man. Could you imagine the conversation though when he gets home that night if he cancelled her show? <laughs> it's like so uh, bad news. <laughs> don't be mad. Promise you won't be mad. Yeah. Uh, Derek say like she's great though. She's earned it. And it's like Harcourt is great. Is that a is that a thing? I, I mean, she was fine. Like I think a lot of it was like the character was quite well written. Like I didn't have any particular issues with her as an actress, but like I wasn't blown away or anything. Like you yeah. know, John Cena was the really the centerpiece for that show, obviously. Um, Derek says, if you were tasked with roasting, sorry, boosting ratings for the Oscars, who would you choose as host? Me. I think they need someone irreverent like Chappelle or Gervais. People want to see Hollywood get roasted. I think. Yeah, I think that's probably what you would need, really. Um, the, the only time when it generates interest is when guys like um, Ricky get involved, you know, and they just tell Hollywood what people think of them. Um, yeah. yeah, I think uh, the last thing you want is like a Jimmy Kimmel or something like that. It's just death. It's yeah. the death of entertainment. Um, best name I can AI think at this point, those people. Yeah, they're just like pod people, I think. Uh, best name I can think of says, wouldn't the Elseworld stuff compete with the Gunverse? It seems odd to compete with yourself. If one Batman is better, it may hurt the other. Um, you, you may be right. In fact, you probably are right. Um, I think the the issue is like they've got this weird situation where things like Joker were massively successful. The Batman, you know, wasn't a massive earner, but it made money and it was popular with fans. And so it's tough to shit can that stuff when it's literally the only thing you've done that's successful. I guess so. This is their best solution, but it's a, it's a weird situation to be in, and they've been in. They've made this situation for themselves, haven't they? They didn't have to produce those movies in the first place. They chose it's a to do it. Situation actually, because uh, you know, general wisdom would say restart, full restart. And it's like we can't full restart. We've got things running right now. It's like, well, then what are we supposed to do? And it's like some cobbled together Frankenstein mission of weird, like half projects, full projects. Hmm. and the continuity is all over the place I'm kind of in a weird way looking forward to seeing the flash now just to see what what like bullshit they try and tell me to make this make sense you know oh, it's gonna have to be something truly special man honestly yeah because like to drum up interest in those characters now the, the, basically the tail end of a dead franchise like that is gonna take something doing um, Simon Ho says, James Gunn's new hiring policy, hire nobody prettier than James Gunn. Henry's out, Ezra, you're hired, probably because Gunn's new wife might like, prefer Henry over him. Uh, Gal, no three-way, no Wonder Woman. I don't know if it's quite as simplistic as that, but <laughs> it's a theory. Um, Big Coffin Hunter says, this is a super dope panel. It was. I uh, wasn't expecting the lineup. I'm going to bother Mauler real quick. I know he's a fan of metal. What's his thoughts on brutal death metal? My personal favorite subgenre. Curious what Longman thinks. Hmm. Brutal death metal. I've never been a huge fan of death metal in general. Um, the metal I like is much more heavy, symphonic, and power. Uh, they're the ones that I'm much more familiar with. Got a little bit put off by other genres, especially like screamo uh is stuff that i can't get into but so i'm afraid i don't have much view on that one i'm sorry but i know how much it's um it's such a specific and thing that i know that there's a lot of people out there who listen to metal and they're like oh my god a youtuber i watch likes metal too it's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello. it happens 
Um, Skylar Hillman says, young Superman and middle-aged Batman? <laughs> Who fucking knows at this point? Anything could oh, happen. Yeah. Um, just Nova says, uh, just stop creating a cinema universe and just create characters first. DC should just stop trying to catch up with the Marvel using the same model. I mean, apparently, yeah, because they, they really don't seem able to do it. Ten years ago, they could have made a go of it, but they bungled it, and it just feels like it's going to be a tough a tough battle to try and get that back up and running. You know? I said it on one of, the, one of the streams, I can't remember, but catching up in 2013 meant having to rush to Avengers. Catching up now means having to rush to end game. Like, I don't yeah. know what, what the plan is at that point. Uh, Dad's Den of Pop Culture says, The problem is starting at Speedy as a junkie. They keep starting at the end rather than the beginning. You can't deconstruct until you construct. That's very true, actually. Yeah, I'd say that's fair. Uh, Timmy says, Moller, imagine after Gandalf uh, falls with the Balrog, once the crew are right side the mines, someone says... Well, that happened. Yeah, that would that would, that's basically what would be done now. I think if Marvel was in charge of it. Uh, Will's word says Earth two twenty twelve to twenty fifteen wonders of the world. Yes or no? I don't know. I don't know what that is. Is that a comic? I assume so. Yeah. Yeah, I've got no idea. Sorry, man. Eric K says Abby Brock Lesnar, Superman Elliot Page, Jonathan Kent, Leslie Jones. Wonder Woman, Lizzo, Green Lantern, Amy Schumer. I mean, that's your dream cast right there, I would say. Yeah, Do it. Dream team. Do it. Gordon Cadell says, Guns DC has some interesting ideas. However, Superman Legacy has me very concerned. Isn't Supergirl's project uh, Woman of Tomorrow bait and switch? Maybe. I mean, I, I, not knowing more about the comics, I don't know if that's the, the deal here, but... Um, yeah, the the fact that they got the word legacy in there makes me wonder if like are they going to just bring Superman in to retire him or something? I don't know. Worrying. Or, like... So interesting choice of title, yeah. <clears throat> Bobby says DC animated universe was the only good superhero content for the last five years. Now that's over, and the DC AU has to connect to this new garbage. Uh, yeah, apparently it does. Blacklist Universe says, Gun took Guardians, which was a trash book at Marvel, and made it one of the best series of comic movies ever. I'll wait to judge on a case-by-case -case basis. That's fair, I would say. I, I would say that doesn't contradict anything we've said. Uh, Bama Grant says, Hail to the panel. Drinker, I'm looking ahead to meeting you in Atlanta. Which books will you bring to sell and autograph? So I'll be bringing uh, Dark Harvest with me, and I'll try and bring some copies of the Ryan Drake books as well. Uh, so they will be there to be signed and whatever, basically. So yeah, looking forward to seeing you, man. The Gilkman says, Hail, much love to all the panel. Keep being amazing. Been a long-time fan of Geeks and Gamers. Love seeing Robert Meyer Burnett on here. Uh, big fan of him and enjoy watching Campia from time to time. Well, thank you very much. It was great to have yeah. Rob on. Um, Julian Stanley says, While I appreciate RMB's optimism, I have zero plans to see any of these in theatres. I wager a good portion of these will not reach theatres as this new universe is hot garbage that's going to fail. Oof. Brutal. Dude, I, uh, I stand by James Gunn to hire Robert to sell the universe to people. I know. <laughs> Did such a better job of presenting <laughs> that. And that was all off the cuff, not off a teleprompter or anything. Yep. Um, Patient Elijah says, Drinker, first off, I just want to thank you for making your main channel a featured one on After Hours. Well, you asked me to do it, and I did. Uh, I appreciate it so much that I want you to be my children's godfather. I mean, that's only natural, I would say. Uh, all joking aside... Uh, have you ever seen the film Goodwill Hunting? Um, I have, like way back in the day. I mean, I remember it being really good, but it's it's been quite a while. But yeah, it's one of those, I guess, one of those classics that's well regarded and aged pretty well. I would say so. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah. Um, Captain Evil Dude says, "Hey Drinker, I love your content, and I was wondering if you haven't cancelled your Amazon Prime due to Rings of Power, could you check out The Legend of Vox Machina? I'd love to hear your thoughts on it because it's so good. Is it?" I don't know. Not seen it. The Legend of Fox Market. I guess I can check it out. And Ted Sheckler says, I found the Critical Drinker about two weeks ago and I've been going through the whole catalogue. Hey, thank you for your work. Uh, also, hi to the legend, Eric. Nice. It was great to have uh, Eric on the other night. And uh, yeah, man, I can't imagine what it must be like binging all my videos uh, in like a two week span. That's, uh, that's a lot of Critical Drinker to get through. It is. Uh, Aaron James says, can Warner Brother just give the DCEU to Robert Meyer Burnett? <laughs> exactly. Maybe. 
business, none of you. Says Drinker, I know you're coming to the Atlanta Comic Con. Are you going to be here all three days? Yes, I am. I think I come in on the Thursday and I go back on the Monday. So, yeah, I'll be there for all of it. Uh, Brad Jacko says, JJ ruined Star Wars 2, to be fair. He did. Yeah. RV Comps says, Last of Us equals three and a half hours of content crammed into two hours of story. What? Um, are they talking about the game to the show sort of thing? I wonder. Yeah, maybe. Do not, shouldn't it be the other way around then? Like two hours of actual story like spread out over three and a half hours of content. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, Mass Jackal says, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, single-handedly annihilated every animated cringe fest for the past few years. A great story about family, trust, and friendship. Take notes, Disney. Well, and I want people yeah. to make sure they recognize the story opens <clears throat> with basically making him very scared and uh, outclassed and running away from his problems. And mm -hmm. they managed to handle it incredibly well. Like, you can do it. You can make a heroic character you know, experience fear and trepidation and stuff, but to tell a story of how they rise back up. Because I was, I was going to say, is it sounds absurd probably to you as well, Drake, the, but uh, Puss in Boots is a deconstruction. Hmm. Yeah, I can get that. I mean, if it's, yeah, if he's suddenly, like, not the hero that he once was, but he's got to, like, find another way or, like, to prevail. Yeah, because I've him more, but I want you to see it. So. <clears throat> yeah, no, that's fair. Well, I mean, Logan was a deconstruction, and I love that, so, yeah, it can yeah, be done. Yeah. Um, just Proto says, remember, Tim Burton had never read Batman and Wrath of Khan banished Roddenberry. Disregarding the source material is not automatically bad. I mean, I would hasten to add that, like, Wrath of Khan didn't disregard the source material, it just disregarded the creator, because how can I put this, like, Gene Roddenberry wasn't quite the, the creative genius that he was in the 1960s by the time they did this movie, and he became increasingly a pain in the arse when it came to, like, making the films. Um, so I can kind of see why he was sidelined. Um, but yeah, it, it can work. It can be done. Definitely, uh, yeah. Brad we just advise against it. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Brad Jacko says, is season three of Picard woke? If it is at all, I'm out. We don't know at this point. Like, um, all we know is that apparently, according to Robert, it's really good. Um, and from what he was telling us, Dave Collins watched it and he liked it. So I think he's got a pretty, a pretty good sense of these things. <coughs> uh, Mr. Nobody says, Waller is the Wario to Mauler's Mario. EFAP canon. I think we need to go with that, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Bob, sorry, Rob Biller says, All right, RMB has never led me wrong. I'm convinced. <coughs> Hated everything since Enterprise. I'm in. There you go. He's won someone over. Um, Rockstar 3 says, Can I skip Picard season 1 and 2 and dive into 3? I mean, from what he was describing, I think it kind of... It vaguely references seasons one and two, but it kind of wants to move past them pretty quickly. And I think most of the characters that were introduced then are gone, and it's just about doing a reunion with the TNG crew, which I'm all in for. It's kind of what they should have done in season one. Uh, fake name says, I prefer Bones to Spock, the man with a chest uh, that argued there was more to life than logic in Star Trek. Yes, I agree. Um, I, I did love Bones, and DeForest Kelly's performance was just, it was always entertaining. Uh, but yeah, like that was the magic of the original, watching the two of them spark off each other. Um, Dwayne Oldson says, RMB, did you enjoy Strange New Worlds as well? I purposely avoided Star Trek Discovery era Trek for years so that I wouldn't learn to hate it. And I thought uh, Strange New Worlds was great Trek. You? I don't know what Rob would say. Um, from what I've heard, Strange New Worlds is better than the other stuff. It's just... Uh, it still suffers from some of the same problems. It's made by the same people, ultimately. But they did go for that more optimistic tone, so that's something. <clears throat> um, Basic Shape says, Replicators and Transporters don't make sense either, but there they are. I mean, Replicators well, kind of do. Transporters are, like, existentially terrifying because yeah. every time you step into one, you get destroyed and just copied. What, um, what Robert was talking about <clears throat> is... Um... If I tell you, like, this is my ray gun and it shoots a ray gun blast, like, you could be like, that's not impossible. And you're like, yeah, no, but I know, but I've given you internal rules. And you're like, can you follow them? It's like, yeah, you can follow them. It's like, okay, good, fine, we understand. It's like, okay. And then, in, you know, in the future, some character just says, if only we had a ray gun, but those don't exist. You're like, what? You do? 
<laughs> or a character had one. What do you mean? You have to address that. And it's like, oh, well, who cares? None of it makes any sense anyway. It's like, no, no, no. Like, yeah. This. And what he was talking about was um, there's no coordinates to retrieve to be able to do what you can do if you would have gone past what you needed to, to zero in on in less than a split second. Kind of reminds me of, um, I brought it up when I was doing, I think, TFA Part 4, where uh, it looks like Han does a handbrake to come out of light speed and he needs to come out ahead of the shield, but before he hits the planet. Yeah, that's like one fraction of a millisecond reaction time. <laughs> yeah, it's not a possibility to do that. Like, that's just not possible. Yeah. I remember, like, just the concept of flying through an asteroid field was considered to be massively dangerous. Like, your chances of success were, like, infinitesimally yeah. small. And this is, like, way beyond that. It's always just crank so... It up. Yeah, it's like always got to be elevated to the next level of bullshit. Um, Blue Team Epsilon says that Star Trek director sounds like reverse Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah, I mean, the guy who's, I think it's Terry Metalis. Um, yeah. Man, he sounds like he knows his stuff. JP says Picard had great setups with bad everything else. Uh, I, I just, yeah, I just found it to be generally bad. Uh, Spectre Von Baron says saw the stream and wondered why you had Adam Savage on your thumbnail. What was this again? Oh, it was like James Gunn, wasn't it? Ah. Uh, Founding Father says, The fact that we'll have a new Batman alongside Matt Reeves' Batman makes me wonder why they didn't let Cavill have an Elseworld Superman, or they could at least have let him have one more film. Yes, it's like I said. You could do any number of things. <clears throat> like I say, it seemed like Cavill was like the, the one popular choice. It's like, oh, he's, he's back for another Superman movie? Everyone seems to like that. <clears throat> um... Russell Hall says, I legitimately find more enjoyment in every Neil Breen film. <laughs> Neil Breen, Jesus Christ. Uh, I've seen than Star Trek Picard, and I'd rather binge watch his entire catalogue than endure season two. I don't blame you. There's there's definitely entertainment to be found there. Uh, Fight the Club says, the hell with six degrees of Kevin Bacon. I bet you'd get as many hits from six degrees of Robert Meyer Burnett. To be honest, I think you'd only need like two degrees. He seems to know everyone. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, Chris Manson says, this is the most epic panel I've ever seen. Thank you for all the content that you create. Well, we aim to please, don't we? Indeed. Uh, hi, Drinker and everyone. This is from Mike Q. I'd like to get my fictional work published. How likely are agents and publishers affected by wokeness and the message? I mean, personally, I've never encountered it, but maybe I've been lucky. I know I've heard horror stories from other writers trying to get published that, you know, they've been asked to change all kinds of things in their stories. Um... It's maybe just the luck of the draw. I, I kind of assume like if you end up with a New York publishing house, you're more likely to encounter that kind of thing. But like I say, I've been pretty lucky. David Silverthorne says, One of the B-movies B that my family really loves is the 1990s McHale's Navy. Tom Arnold as McHale, Tim Curry as the villain, and an amazing supporting cast. I would love to comment on that, but I feel like I've never seen it. So I don't know, man. Um, Alan Paxton says, well, I skipped Picard season two, as season one did such a thorough job of making me hate the world. After this, I'm willing to give season three a fair shake. I think that's a pretty, pretty fair take on it then. Yeah. Um, Apollyon says, hey, drinker, can't watch now, but I'm definitely going to catch the replay. Wanted to tune in for a bit anyway. Love your content. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, my friend. Madcat15 says, what do you think of the gay love scene of The Last of Us TV show? I had to turn it off because that just wasn't for me. I mean, like, yeah, we just described, like, it was really just the two of them kissing for, like, um, 30 seconds or something. There wasn't really anything to it. Um, so, yeah, it didn't didn't really bother me. Um, it did make me think, like, there would be a lot of tangling going on with their beards. Like, two <laughs> beards kissing, that's got to be that's gotta be itchy. But apart from that, yeah, didn't really care. Um, SS Phoenix says, cheers, keep up the rest of the work, gents. Uh, sorry, best work. Uh, Mr. Drinker, I love that you enjoyed Triple R. I highly recommend uh, Kantara, available on Prime. Slightly jarring pacing, but a great story, especially the last 20 minutes. Well, it's gonna... Triple R has got me Prime for other, like, Bollywood stuff, so I'll give it a go. Yeah. Must Jackal says, Lara Croft would never exist if it wasn't for Jennifer Lawrence. That's true, none of us would. She paved the way for female heroes. She did. Paved the way for organisms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was the birth of the universe. She actually gave birth to it herself. Uh, Big Sparky says, You guys should check out The Peripheral and Warrior Nun. Both shows have a female protagonist that isn't a Mary Sue uh, and really good stories. Nice. 
I've heard good things about the peripheral. Uh, Matthew A says, who will play Abby in season two? I mean, we've, you know, we've thrown around lots of ideas from Brock Lesnar to John Cena. It's, yeah, it's a tough one. I, th I, I feel sorry for whatever poor actress they finally get because she's going to get so much abuse and it's going to be unfair. Yeah, she'll get roasted just for being a part of this. Um... Rampaging Eject says, Hey fellas, when do you think they will reboot the Harry Potter series, including the three main characters? My guess is five to ten years, but what do you guys think? I mean, I couldn't give a shit one way or the other because I don't even care about Harry Potter in the slightest. If they, they redo the movies all over again, whatever. <laughs> like, Yeah, I kind of feel the same. All that's going to happen is J.K. Rowling's going to make even more money, so I'm sure she'll be fine with it. Mm-hmm. Sir Boy of Lard says, It's definitely safe to say that some creators take the saying, write what you know, far too literally. Yeah. That's why you end up with shows like Velma. Uh, Billy the Kid Lawrence says, John Campia called a super chat an idiot question when asked if he would collab with Geeks and Gamers. He told Rob to move on to the next question. Never seen Rob and Jeremy together before the stream, so it tickled me after that. <laughs> I think they have been together, haven't they? They've streamed before, the two of them. Yeah, it, it, and and to be fair, that sort of scenario is like there's nothing Robert can do. He can just be like, all right then, you know, I can be friends with two people who hate each other. That's just a reality for a lot of us, really. Uh, yeah, it's just it's the YouTube landscape, I guess. It's such a weird thing from John Campio as well. Like, you could you could <laughs> talk to him or you'd make a joke about it or something. It's like, are you really that mad about geeks and gamers existing? Um, Brian Christgau says, what up, fellas? Hot take, the new Superman will be Elliot Page. Yes, we've heard that one. Uh, also, do you have a P.O. Box drinker? I want to send you my comic uh, Six Gun Gorilla. <clears throat> I do have a P.O. Box number, actually. Um, what's the best way to make it known rather than just like blurting it out because I don't have it written down here? But um, I've got it on my Patreon. Um, I'll maybe try and list it on my um, community page or something like that so people can see it. Uh, but yeah, I do have one. Toshi Yar says, the best examples of bringing a story into modern times are Romeo and Juliet with Leonardo DiCaprio and Pride and Prejudice with Zombies with Kira Knightley. Now there was a movie. Wait, was Kira uh, Knightley in Pride and Prejudice and Zombies? I have no idea. Let me see. I kind of want to see that just because it was in the name alone. Uh, let's see. Watch the original and then watch that just to see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. It'd be really no, funny. I don't believe. He... Although Lena Headey was in it, and so was Charles Dance. Damn. Now I have to see. Wait, Charles Dance yeah. was in the zombie one. Yep. Now I have to see it. Now, now you're in. <laughs> you got all his yep. attention. Charles Dance is in it. I'm there. Uh, where is the next one? Um, Rockstar Three says Bella Ramsey equals Habsburg chin. Google it. It's a Habsburg jaw, actually. <laughs> but yeah. There is quite a high um, like jaw-to-face ratio in that case, so yeah, it could be. Uh, Jaro Mayo says, What do you think? A supervillain tries to trick a superhero into washing his balls. That's his whole shtick, and the hero always falls for it. I mean, yeah, we're at the, we're at the parody phase of superheroes, so I say go with it. Try it out. Waylon Pacephus says, Naughty Dog is officially done with Uncharted. I wouldn't yep. be surprised if they make one about Nathan Drake's daughter. Oh, they've uh, they've announced that they're done with it. I think. What? Sorry. They announced that they're done with Uncharted. They've said they're done with Uncharted, oh, well. and that they're going to be done with The Last of Us unless there's a really good story to tell for part three. All right. Well, I'll just shut the fuck up on that score then. <laughs> Consider that retracted. I um, that's what I saw in like the form of a tweet. So I don't know how true it is. You know. Hmm. Uh, Silly Raccoon says, "Can't wait for the Fat Geralt origin story, if nothing else." Uh, yeah, I think we all want that. Um, Brad Ojako says John Fetterman as Abby in The Last of Us do it I'd say yeah go with it um, he's, he's got the build for it I would say <laughs> I don't know if he could remember the lines though that's the problem uh, Matt Lines says what was the first film you saw at the cinema <clears throat> good question first one I don't know I feel like for me it might have been Jurassic Park that's the earliest one I can remember I, I remember the I remember seeing the Flintstones, and I think it was the only movie I've ever walked out of at the cinema. <laughs> I was just like, "Mom, I'm bored. Can we leave?" <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I, I think Jurassic Park's probably the, the only one that comes to mind is the earliest. So, yeah, it would have been like nine when that came out. Yeah. Um, John Hamm says, Mauler's explosion on the real BBC with James Gunn expecting praise for finishing the script before production starts made my week. Cheers. Yeah, I'm losing my wits a bit with the whole, like, you announced that as a feature as though, like, I just can't believe it. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a weird way of doing things. Um, WJ Valente says, A question for all. Any comments on the original Mortal Kombat movie or Rumble in the Bronx or a Bruce Lee favourite? Uh, I love them. Um, so, I've got a bit of a soft spot from the original Mortal Kombat movie. It's goofy and the special effects are special, but uh, <laughs> it's pretty fun. Uh, you know, it didn't take itself too seriously. We got an EFAT movies on the original Mortal Kombat movie and the new one back to back. Oh, nice. What did you think of the new one, by the way? Um, I really liked Kano, and I liked a lot of the violence, but the plot was retarded, and a lot of time was wasted making mistakes, and Jesus Christ, the protagonist sucked. Yeah. I couldn't tell you a single thing about the plot. I didn't know if it even had one. I just remember the fighting and Generic. Kano with his laser eye. Generic man, leader man, hero man. Like, oh, he was so lame. Yeah. Johnny Cage would have been a better choice, but they just didn't do it. Yeah. Uh, SS Ringo says, any thoughts on the Resident Evil 4 remake previews the last couple of days? Thanks for another great stream. Um, they look pretty good from what I've seen. I don't know if you've seen much of them. Oh, uh, of what, sorry? Well, they've been releasing a lot of like gameplay footage of Resident Evil 4 Remake ah. over the past few days, and uh, it's been getting quite a bit of attention. Yeah, I, um, I'm trying to avoid stuff like that because I'm definitely playing it, so I'm going to you know, try and take it all in brand new. Okay. Um, LC Lapin says, So apparently the Five Nights at Freddy's movie started shooting yesterday. Regardless of feelings on the franchise, it'll be another fun test of how to adapt a game. That's That's been in the works for like the past 10 years or something, hasn't it? That feels like been in development hell yeah um, I, I don't know enough about it i'm not into fnaf i guess is the franchise <laughs> moniker yeah FNAF. I, th I always thought it was just like you know just a, a kind of flash in the pan game concept that just became un inexplicably massive and yeah. suddenly it spawned all this like backstory and stuff um Seamus Collins says, thoughts on how Amazon will handle the absolute xenophobia of humanity first in Warhammer 40k. Save us, Henry Cavill. First super chat ever. Well, thank you for the super chat. And um, yeah, how are they going to handle it? I hope they do it faithfully. I mean, I'm assuming if Henry's involved and he would probably only agree to do this at this point after doing The Witcher, like if he had creative control. So hopefully they're accurate. Um, I guess the thing to stress about 40k is like, Humanity are not, or should I say, the Imperium is not the good guys. Like it's, uh, it's like a horrible, twisted parody of like humans, governments, and society and stuff. So it's not meant to be something to aspire to. Uh, so yeah, hopefully they capture that. Uh, Obduello says the five film adaptation of uh, Roruni Kenshin. Are a great watch. The, the entire story of the manga was executed excellently. Highly recommend. Nice. And I'm sorry if I butchered the name there. And FX Caliber says, What are your takes on the woke changes in Dead Space remake? Ooh, I feel more is going to get triggered. <laughs> They're small, like the F capitalism written on a wall, but there is a clear push one particular way. You're a gunshot in a second. You'll know what happened. <laughs> hey, so. We found out last night. I couldn't could fucking believe it. So everyone's going on about this anti-capitalist messaging in the game, right? Um, you find splayed on a wall, like, fuck this, this capitalist corporation, they, they did all of this sort of thing. Now, the story, as I gave you a premise, right? Like, the idea is that um, the CEC or this organization that have... The Earth is out of resources, so they started to go to other planets and crack them and mine them and get resources to, you know keep everything going in terms of civilization and they they've uncovered something they really wanted to get to Aegis 7 which is a, the planet in the in the game something happened there that's caused insane crazy horrifying problems 
So I think it's pretty pretty reasonable for any one character in this universe to blame capitalism for why this all happened. Um, being like the CEC want to make shit tons of money, and so they go to a place to get resources to make use of it business wise. I think mm. no issue with any individual character shitting on any individual economic system. That's fine with me. But the real kicker drinker, the real kicker, that message, the real problem everyone has with it is because the original didn't have this. So why the fuck have they done this now? You have to, you know, why'd they make the change? Why'd they do it? It is it's in the, the original. message, Mauler. It's everywhere. <laughs> it is in the original. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, you can find it in the original game. So it's just like when when we when we discovered that I was fucking losing my shit. I was like, I can't take this anymore. <laughs> like it's such a it's such a normal part of this game. I would even write say it represents like zero point zero 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 one percent of all of the game's content. Why the hell is everyone focused so hard on it? Yeah. It's um, yeah, I think yeah. man, it's just become the boogeyman at this point. Everyone's seen it everywhere. Um but yeah, I'm looking forward to playing the game myself. I'm looking forward to getting into it. I think the game is excellent, and the, if I'm un to understand you correctly for what like woke elements would be, I'd be like, they are minuscule, and to be honest with you, Drinker, you're not going to be able to see them. You'll have to have them pointed out to you. Okay. Uh, well, I'm on the lookout for that gender-neutral bathroom. God, that's, that's going to be a red <laughs> flag for me. Anyway, well, that brings us to the end of our Super Chats for this evening. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure to get through your questions and comments and stuff. Very much appreciate it. Thank you for being so generous, as always. And, uh, yeah, well, catch us on the next Open Bar, I guess, when uh, we get around to it. It'll be Thursday, so not too long. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all we have for today. So go away now. Bye.